Hi, I'm here today with uh, Lutz Finger, who is the uh, Director of Data Science and Data Engineering at LinkedIn, and the author of this book, uh, Ask, Measure, Learn. Uh, welcome, Lutz. Thank you. So Lutz, um, every company wants to be a data-driven company and is in the process of or about to launch some kind of uh, data initiative. Um, what are some of the obstacles or uh, mistakes that are made by companies in these initiatives? Well, there are obstacles can be probably split into two groups. One obstacle is you don't have the right idea of what you're doing. The other obstacle is you have the right idea and you don't have the right team. Let me talk about the idea. Um, a lot of companies have data in some shape or form. It's not centralized, it's not easy accessible, and so on, and therefore it stops already there. But only having data as such is not a savior. So having a lot of data might not be useful. Think about a line. I can describe a line with two points, two data points. If I have a million of those data points all fall in that line, it's not helpful to have so much data. Um, so often companies underestimate when they say, we have data, now we want to be data driven. They might not have the right data. As well as they might not have the right idea what to use with it. To be data driven means actually to understand what your business needs. If you look at a cycle of innovation, you have um, adjacent innovation to the product, make the product better, and we see a lot of data things happening there. Companies can actually, or most of like, will be successful if they start in this area. But then we do see companies who use the data they have to disrupt their industry, to change their industry. But again, it's not coming from the data, it's coming from a smart business decision-making process. Yeah, and so a lot of people talk about the shortage of data scientists. Um, is, is that really the bottleneck that, that people say it is? Well, I mean, this is the second part of the team. Um, from Adam Smith's time on, we know like how to break down a process. It was the start of industrialization, the, the heydays of the manager, right? You take some complex methods and you break it down into process steps. Same is valid here. If a company goes out and says, I need a data scientist, and he should be an awesome statistician, a uh, great engineering guy, uh, he needs product knowledge and product marketing knowledge, and yes, please, he needs to come up with their own question to solve, so an MBA would be good. And that's pretty much the same thing as saying, like, he can walk on water, and yes, he does glow in the dark. Those guys are very rare, and probably are not good at anything if they're good at s everything a little bit. So what you need is actually, you, you need people who have the insights knowledge, the domain knowledge in order to frame the questions. Mostly MBAs, business types, operations types of people who are very close to the actual business needs. You need people who can work with data, who pull data out, who transform data, who know what the technology needs are. And you need people who build models um, in order to serve that. And those models should be scalable uh, to a certain extent. Now, you don't have everything in one person, and you should never try to attempt to find one person. But often people have actually the knowledge for most of those folks internal already in the company. It's only a question of how to use it. Right, so the, the bottleneck may be uh, more evenly distributed than... There, there is no bottleneck for data scientists. Okay. The bottleneck is how do you um, frame and set up work in a company in order. Now there is obviously always a bottleneck for good talent, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the knowledge of stati statistics, like they're in the market, they are awesome people in terms of uh, um, um, science backgrounds and so on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as well as there are a lot of n people who n know engineering. So that's not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is very often for companies uh, who don't have a culture in working with data, mm -hmm. to actually cut down the process into the right steps. So a lot of people talk about the uh, benefits of exploratory data analysis. Um, do you think this is overblown in some, in some way? Um, not really. So uh, um, I, I do believe that exploratory analysis is very important. Um, if you look at an analyst trying to get his hands around it, if you look at a data scientist who actually tries to first understand what's in the data, it's it, like he needs, he needs to get a feeling for mm -hmm. what he is working with. And he might find awesome things there. 
it is probably overblown in terms of um, I look at the data, you know, beautiful mind, kind of like do some wishy-washy and I come up with a solution. That's probably not going to happen. It's a little bit like the needle in the haystack. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great to have you here at Haas. My pleasure.